So, welcome to another edition of Driving Perilously, the show in which we turn on the radio and talk about what it is that we find. This is my old phone. I don't look as red on this one. Huh. That's fascinating. All right, let's see what we've got. That was Legends 100.3. The best is yet to come. Y100. So Madonna, I've talked about Madonna several times. Madonna was my favorite in 1984, maybe. Um, and then she came out with the Vita, which is one of the best movies ever made. <clears throat> and her stuff before and after is certainly hit or miss. Sometimes her vocals are just great and sometimes her vocals are a little weak. Sometimes her vocals are weak. And sometimes she's a great actress and sometimes she's a good actress and sometimes she's just I don't know cutesy or something. But she's very successful, you know? If she was less successful, I wouldn't talk about her with such candor. Because, you know, it's hard to be a singer, an actress, an entertainment icon. Um, she's done lots and lots of things. <clears throat> the level of respect that she has is just odd. Like some people celebrate her because she is successful, not because she is talented. And I'm trying to think of a parallel to that. It seems like most people who are a celebrity idol are celebrated because of their talent. And then people can argue as to whether or not they should have more number one hits because they're more talented than somebody else. <clears throat> or they do have a bunch of number one hits because they are so talented. But Madonna is celebrated for her success. But not in the way that people, Zsa Zsa Gabor, Paris Hilton, Kardashian, are celebrated for being a celebrity. She's not celebrated for being a celebrity. She's celebrated for her pop, popular success. Which is, you know, good for her, right? Um, so, her name. Her name always intrigues me because I'm into word craft and etymology and implications of words and inferences behind words and, and I'm trying to avoid spells <coughs> spelling because I believe that there's much more going on with media than what is on the surface so around that same time a little bit before I was fascinated with Madonna, there was the movement of subliminal uh, exposure. So people would look at ads, photographs, still photographs and ads, you know, a beautiful picture of a product, and they would point out that in the background there's a shape or a word that is barely detectable with the liminal, with the, with the brain with the consciousness, but under the consciousness, subliminal, <coughs> the idea was that we could notice the picture of something and that would make us buy that product or make us get a message, a secret message, right? So I've always liked secret messages and codes. Um, Encyclopedia Brown, 
mysteries to solve and so forth. You know, it's nice to put things in a nice package and categorize things and say that this line of symbols really means this other thing. But what I'm talking about now is much more insidious, much harder to pin down, and much uh, more general. So if you look at society, popular culture, and what's changed since Madonna, there's been a lot of changes, and you can say, well, how did we get here? <clears throat> Now that is her name, right? I have a relative named that. People, Catholics and other people, chose to name their daughters after a title of the Virgin Mary, Madonna, Our Lady, My Lady, My Madonna, My Lady. You know, like Notre Dame is My Lady. I don't know if anybody's named Notre Dame, but people, are named Pilar, which is one of the one of the titles of Mary. People are named Virginia. People are named Madonna. Just not too many. But because of her success, which is universally celebrated, even by people who don't like her, they still give her props for her success. That word doesn't mean the mother of Jesus anymore. It means one particular star. Now that coup, that revolution, that replacement of one word meaning a completely different thing is amazing to me. Because in our culture, which is traced from ancient Greece to Hellenism, which is the combination of Greece and Roman, Greek and Roman, and then medieval Christianity. That culture, for what, 1,500 years, 1,000 years, Madonna was an important icon, one of the most important icons. Now that particular name, I'm not sure of its provenance, I'm not sure which countries use that title a lot, and which countries use that title a little bit. Like, I was growing up and I knew that Madonna was Jesus' mother, but it wasn't like everybody knew that. <clears throat> but that word has just been replaced. It means a particular woman, a woman who dressed up in a wedding dress, and of course Mary is known for her marriage, motherhood, and sorrow, and virginity. But now it's a woman who dressed up in a wedding dress and crawled around on the floor, and wasn't a virgin, but she was like a virgin, and that song, Like a Prayer, a beautiful song but she's flirting with the religious imagery which was you know hoisted upon her at birth she didn't make up that name and here we are so <clears throat> one little aspect of the changes in our culture and I think it's illustrated pretty clearly the implications of which are rather unknown right without one singer would culture have done everything that it did anyway and just had different singers yeah pretty sure but that singer was used to accomplish a certain goal. Now, this is a nice, cool Wednesday morning 
does actually feel like something we would consider October, even if we were not in South Florida. And that is it for today's episode of Driving Perilously.